Today's menu is the chocolate parfait from Isekai Shokuro. To begin, we're turning the stove onto a medium heat and then into a medium saucepan we're adding in 600ml of whole milk. Let the milk come up to a bare simmer making sure to stir the milk occasionally just so that it doesn't scald on the bottom of the pan. You'll know that your milk is ready when you can see some fine bubbles are forming around the edges of the milk and it's nice and steamy. Once it reaches this point you can turn off the heat and set it off to one side. While the milk is cooling down slightly we can focus on the rest of our ice cream base. In a bowl I've already separated 8 large egg yolks and then to these egg yolks we're going to be adding in 235 grams of white sugar sugar before whisking it all together until the mixture is pale and fluffy. This should only take you about a minute or two if you're whisking it by hand or about 30 seconds if you're using a hand or a stand mixer over a medium high speed. Once your egg yolks look something like this we can start introducing our hot milk into the eggs. While you're continuously whisking your eggs you're going to very slowly add in about a quarter cup's worth of the hot milk. Continue to whisk the eggs for about 10 seconds to distribute the milk before adding in another quarter cup of hot milk. Repeat this process two more times until you've added a total of one cup of hot milk into the mixture. By doing this we're tempering the egg yolks which allow allows the eggs to slowly come up to temperature and reduce the chances of our ice cream scrambling. Once your egg yolks have been tempered, we can add in the remaining milk and then whisk everything together until it's well combined. This last addition should only take you about 30 seconds. Once the ice cream base is well combined, we're going to be pouring the contents of our bowl back into the milk saucepan and then we're going to gently cook our ice cream base over a medium heat, making sure to never let this come up to the boil. During the cooking process, you'll need to be constantly stirring the contents of the pan, ensuring to scrape along the sides and the bottom of the pan as well to prevent parts of the ice cream base from scrambling. As this continues to cook, you'll see that the mixture will gradually become thicker and thicker until it eventually reaches the point where you can dip a spoon into the base and then when a line is drawn through it, it holds its shape. At this point you can turn off the heat and then strain this mixture through a sieve and into a freezer safe bowl. As you can see, my mixture ended up scrambling a fair bit because I had a very poorly timed delivery to my house and I left the mixture unattended for a little bit too long. The end result still turned out fine, I just had to sieve this a couple more times off camera to remove all the lumps. Once you've strained your ice cream base, we're going to add in half a gram of salt, 4 teaspoons or 20 mils of vanilla paste or extract, and lastly, 600 mils of heavy cream. Give that a good mix so that everything is well combined, and then we're going to cover this with plastic wrap, ensuring that the plastic wrap is pressing against the surface of the ice cream base to prevent the skin from forming. Then we're transferring this into the fridge and allowing it to chill for a minimum of 8 hours, but preferably overnight. After patiently waiting for our ice cream base to chill, it's now day 2 and we can begin churning our ice cream. I'm using the KitchenAid ice cream maker, but feel free to use whatever you like. Simply Simply add your ice cream base to your ice cream maker of choice and then we're going to churn it to factory directions. For people who do have a KitchenAid ice cream bowl, you just want to churn this on the lower speed for 15 to 20 minutes. During that time you'll see that a lovely ice cream base transforms from a very loose and fluid vanilla custard to something that looks like a semi-melted pile of ice cream after about 5 to 10 minutes and then finally after 15 to 20 minutes you should be left with a churned ice cream that has a beautifully thick and luxurious soft serve consistency like this. Once your ice cream is beautifully churned to this consistency, you can transfer it over into whatever freezer safe container you have available, and then we're just going to spread the ice cream nice and even across the container to remove any air pockets. Cover your container with a lid and let this sit in the freezer for a minimum of 4 hours before scooping. And while we're waiting for that to happen, let's make some fudge sauce. Thankfully, the fudge sauce for our parfait is a lot less work. Start by turning your stove onto a medium heat and into a small saucepan we're combining 1 cup or 250 mils of cream, 100 grams of brown sugar, and 2 tablespoons or 30 mils of golden syrup. Start giving the contents of the saucepan a mix before remembering that you also need to add in 20 grams of butter too. Because, you know, this wasn't bad enough for you already. Then with everything actually in the pan, we're going to stir it all together until it's completely melted and then we're going to bring this mixture to the boil over a medium high heat. Once the sauce is boiling, we're going to turn down the heat and allow this to cook for about 5 minutes to intensify in flavour. I'd suggest using a slightly larger saucepan than I did as well because otherwise you're going to have to constantly stir this just to ensure that it doesn't bubble over. After 5 minutes of cooking the sauce, we're going to turn off the heat before adding in 200 grams of good quality dark chocolate pieces and whisking that into the sauce until it's fully incorporated. You'll see that at the start it will look quite streaky and separated, but as you continue to whisk the sauce together, it will transform into a wonderfully glossy and thick fudge sauce. When that has been achieved, we're also going to whisk in 1.5 teaspoons or 7.5 mils of vanilla extract. Take a moment to appreciate how luscious and shiny your fudge sauce is, maybe give it a few dribbles off of a spoon for fun, and then we're going to keep it warm until we're ready to serve. Lastly, before we can assemble, let's make a quick Chantilly whipped cream. Into a bowl or a jar, we're combining 300 mils of cream, 1 tablespoon or 15 grams of white sugar, and 1 teaspoon or 5 mils of vanilla extract. Then we're just going to whisk this together by hand or using a machine until the cream reaches soft or stiff peaks, depending on your preference. 
After that has been nicely whipped, I'm going to transfer about a third of the whipped cream into a separate bowl and mix that together with a bit of our slightly cooled fudge sauce just so that we have another layer of flavour for our parfait. Then for the remaining two thirds of cream, I'm just transferring it into a piping bag that has been fitted with a large star nozzle so that we can pipe it later. Now let's go and build a parfait. To build your parfait, you'll obviously need an old school milkshake glass to set the mood. Then to start building this guy, we're going to add a few chunks of dark chocolate to the bottom of our glass. There's no real order that you have to follow for a parfait, so take what I'm about to say as merely a suggestion and feel free to build this however you want. Next up, I'm adding just a small amount of the Chantilly whipped cream, which has already begun to melt because I decided to make parfaits on like a 40 degree day, which is a terrible idea, but I was committed at this point. Follow that up with a bit of our chocolate whipped cream to add a bit more colour and then we can start adding in our fruit. Feel free to use whatever fruit you'd like. For today's parfait I'll be using a mixture of segmented oranges and sliced strawberries because that's what I had in the house. After the fruit we're pouring in some more of that chocolate whipped cream and now it's ice cream time. Scoop yourself a decent sized bowl of ice cream and try to gently place it into the glass before watching it choose to just plop into the glass on its own. Then to give a bit more support for what's to come, I'm going to add some more strawberries and oranges on top of the ice cream. And because this dessert didn't have enough dairy at this point, we're piping on a big old swirl of our Chantilly whipped cream, which is really starting to get soft now because of the heat. Now to finish things off, we're garnishing the top of our parfait with an old school chocolate cigar, a chocolate wafer biscuit, a couple slices of banana, a light drizzle of our fudge sauce, add on a little sprig of mint for a pop of colour, and lastly, the tiniest little dusting of cocoa powder. And here you guys have the chocolate parfait from Isakai Chocolate. As far as visuals go, I think we did a pretty great job today. I do wish that the fruit was a bit more visible on the sides of the glass, but unfortunately that's just how stuff falls into play sometimes. Anyway, now it's time for the worst part of eating a parfait, and that's figuring out how to take your first bite without spilling everything out of the glass. But as you can see, once you start, you really don't want to stop. This parfait, in my opinion, turned out quite well. The ice cream is lovely and smooth, and the vanilla bean flavour really comes through strong. The two different whipped creams both carry through their distinct flavours of chocolate and vanilla and add another layer of creamy richness to the parfait. The fruit in this is super important because not only does it provide a nice textural firmness but also a much needed burst of freshness to help cut through all the rich cream and ice cream. The fudge sauce is very chocolatey and indulgent so you don't necessarily need a lot of it although next time I think I would add a little bit more into the parfait layers as well. All in all, I think that this is a lovely sweet treat that you should try making for yourself, just maybe do it on a day where half your ingredients aren't going to melt on you during assembly. As always my friends, thanks so much for watching today's episode, if you enjoyed it, let me know by dropping a like down below and let me know in the comments what food from anime and other media you'd like to see in the future. Subscribe to the channel for a new episode every single week, and until then, pull up a chair, unfill that napkin, and I'll see you in the anime kitchen. Cheers.